Well, we all know that calcium is good for our bones, right? But what exactly does it do for you specifically? And how much do you need and where can you get it besides in supplements? Well, joining us this morning is Joel Detchen from Windmill Farms. Thank you so much for coming in, as always. Thanks for having us. So calcium, everyone always talks about calcium, especially for women. So what, what does it really do? Calcium is actually the, the mineral that makes everything hard in the body, whether it be muscles, whether it be bones. It helps to contract and to keep our skeletal system really, really strong. In fact, we have about 1.5% to 2% of our body weight is, is calcium, okay. and 99% of that is in our bones. Okay. So we really need that, that substance in there for long periods of time to, to hold the skeleton together, but it's also replacing itself. So we need other nutrients to help bring it in, bring it out, and to make it work the way it's supposed to so the bones stay in the proper uh, balance. Okay. And, and on an average, most people, do they get enough calcium in their diet? It's kind of hard. The, the problem is not getting so much calcium. It's getting absorbable calcium. Okay. If we don't have the right amount of stomach acid, the calcium kind of goes through us. The calcium carbonate is what people are used to, and it's about a 10 to 12% absorption, not very good. So, so what do we need to, for the absorption? Obviously, is it vitamin D, that they say, with the milk? Yes. Or how does... Vitamin D helps a lot, but just getting our stomach acid up. And believe it or not, these greens help to get our stomach acid up to begin with. They help us to really break stuff down. So when that calcium comes in, it becomes ionized and can be absorbed very easily. Okay, now there's other foods that have calcium, but everyone always thinks about milk. And some sure. people are lactose intolerant. So what is, is milk a good source of calcium? In theory, yes. There's a lot of uh, calcium in it. But once we heat it over to about 160 degrees, we super saturate it so the calcium doesn't come loose. It's, okay, it's heated a, meaning you pasteurize yeah, it. Yeah, once it's pasteurized, pasteurize. it's kind of hard for the body to digest. So that's why farmers and all that used to use the raw milk because it would be absorbed very easily. So in theory, there's a lot of calcium in it, but the body can't do much with it. I see. What about those calcium-added, like orange juices and all those added things? Do those Those work? are probably better because it's very acidic. The okay. uh, orange juices, so the acidity will help that calcium to work. So that's probably a better idea. Oh, those are liquids. Well, now let's start talking about natural foods where you yeah. can get your natural calcium. What would they be? We have our uh, good old buddy here, kale. Now, kale's very bitter, activates yes. the body's ability to make more uh, good digestive juices and whatnot, but it has a, a ton of calcium and also has a good amount of magnesium. We, we want to not just overwhelm and have calcium as a superstar. Magnesium regulates it all day long. They push each other in and out of the cell. Okay, so if someone's taking, like, say, a calcium supplement, like especially women, they need to make sure they're getting enough you magnesium better believe as well. It. At least a one, one, to, one to two ratio or one to one ratio. The body has to have that to keep it balanced. Otherwise, the calcium can build up in places we don't want it to build up. Interesting. Okay, so kale, and obviously hard to get down for some people, um, so you're saying juicing might, or um, actually making it Blender. into blending it. Yes. Okay, might be a good thing. Okay, what is this? That's the um, mustard greens. Mustard greens, also yes. a good source of calcium in this? Those are the collard greens, and we have the Brussels sprouts over here. Brussels sprouts and collard greens. Now, how about regular lettuce? Lettuce doesn't have as much calcium in it. It does, but we want to make sure we go with the romaine or other types, because the iceberg doesn't have a whole lot in there, but water. Okay. Water type thing. So most lettuce and most greens have it, but these are the ones that are highly concentrated. Yes. Focus and we need like calcium. pounds of this a day, which is really hard to do. The body just needs tons and tons of greens, and we don't get them like we should. So it causes imbalances in our body. But the more greens we get, there's an old saying, if you want to be clean, you got to have your greens. So and even if you blend it, it might be better. You can still get the yes. greens. You're not getting the fiber that you need. Yeah, you get the, you'll get the fiber from the blender but not from a juicer. Got it. Okay, so let's talk about yogurts, obviously, in different ways. Those are pasteurized as well. Are you still getting enough calcium as you would do in milk? Or? Yeah, because they add the bacteria back in, okay. so the bacteria can start absorbing and eating up all that calcium to, to break it down. That's all this, this does. The, the good bacteria chew on it and break it down. It takes it from a large molecule down to a small molecule so your body can absorb it quickly. I see. So, so regular yogurt as well as soy yogurt as well as goat milk, all the same effect, yes. depending on terms yes. of any one more calcium than the other one? Not really. It's just what your body can tolerate. Some do good with okay. cows, some don't. And obviously cheese. Yes. How does cheese compare to milk and uh, yogurt in terms Much of calcium? Much different. We grab some cheeses that have not been heated, so that means the calcium is not going to be super saturated. So it's saturated. non pasteurized cheese. Yes. Those okay. are actually raw cheeses. And cheddar cheese is loaded. It has 750 milligrams per one quarter of that. Okay, so that's raw, so from raw milk, if you check for raw milk, but that's not good for pregnant women, or is there any other people that's not good for? Talk to your doctor, but... It's generally, the, the good bacteria is really, really good for the body. So just talk to okay. Doc, see what he has to say about it. And obviously, uh, nuts, um, oh, calcium, and almonds. Yeah, would you believe that? I did some homework, too. Uh, almonds are loaded with calcium. That's what keeps them hard and keeps them uh, in the shape. Okay, of the and calcium and, and walnuts. Now, obviously, would you choose almonds over yogurt? Would that be which I would add the two. Together. Yes. <laughs> almonds in your yogurt. Yes. <laughs> Especially if you soak them overnight. It opens them all up. It gets the fiber ready so the body's ready to absorb everything that's in there. Okay, we're running out of time, but real quick, do supplements really work? This one is a brand new product out. You better believe it. It's completely fermented. There's, there's D, there's vitamin K, there's strontium. 
There's calcium, magnesium. It's all completely absorbable and completely ready to go. It's all very similar to a yogurt. So this is a new chapter, Bone Strength, called Take Care. But make sure that you, your calcium supplements have magnesium and vitamin D so that it helps yes. the absorption. And preferably a citrate or some type of acidic form so the body can grab it and absorb it because it depends right. on a, a digestive function. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming in. Thanks Adult for Extra with Windmill Farms. And to be more aware about calcium. Keeping our bones strong. Right, Chrissy? Yeah.